niin, niin mun mielestä vielä tuoreen kaan PowerPoint ei tuo vektori graffaa, koska se olisi vaan liian vaikeaa. Mä oon silleen, että rasterisoi, rasterisoi. Et varmaan halunnut näyttää tätä juuri sen kokoisella tykillä, kun mitä oli niin näytössä. Etherin on vahvaa, että on aina koko ajan lopettiin viimerkkaasilla. And that was the talk. <laughs> <laughs> that was an abject lesson in uh, in uh, fail. So it's good we managed to get to four o'clock before we somebody had to tweet Python fi fail. So as Mikko said, he called me up and said, "Could you do a talk?" And I was like, "Yeah, on <laughs> community." Okay. <laughs> so so uh, like the first talk of the day. I blatantly just stole the code. Sorry, <coughs> it's under an open source license. <laughs> so I adapted the code. From community, import awesomeness, do stuff. Reference to the XKCD flying comic, right? I'm not gonna go into the code too deeply for do stuff, because um, I don't understand it. Uh, that's for the guys who are doing C Python. It's above me that. <laughs> Why have a talk about community? Who here understands the word community? Yay, I can go home. <laughs> um, that's good. Um, <clears throat> shout out if you disagree with the stuff. Python saw me RU is six months old. So it's a good time for it to think about what does it want from community? What do you understand by the word community? And what are we going to do with this infamous do stuff function? Mick, I mentioned uh, this is just some of the stuff I managed to pull up pretty quickly of things I'm involved in. Communities. Now they've got some commonalities in there. Bar camps and Garage 48, what about their camp? Open coffee. They're all events. They happen periodically, and people come together in a physical place and talk. Traveling Salesman's a project. Uh, Migo Finland's is, is a vibrant, thriving community. <laughs> Don't believe the hype. Uh, Jaiku is also a vibrant, thriving community, because they're about to shut the servers down. So it's all got very busy on there, so everyone tries to extract their data. Uh, Venture Garage and Hub Helsinki are places. So the common thing with those communities is physical space. Python Swarmy has this extra thing in that it's a local version of a global community. So it has this extra thing of the impact of community. Now, So ask the question, what is community? And during the next four hours and 753 slides, actually, no, I can't talk for that long. Actually, I can talk for that long. I just don't have 473 slides. Um, I'm going to try and pose some questions to you so that you have something to talk about in the bar tonight because there isn't any ice hockey on tonight. So you need something to talk about. So, building a community. How do you build a community? Good, this is a Finnish audience. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, my personal opinion is the most important thing for a community is you must have something common. You must have something together. It's an online place that you all go. You know, cheers where everybody knows your name. I don't <laughs> sing either, I all dance. Um, everyone remember the series Cheers on TV? Yeah. Right. So you need a common place. Now, it either needs to be an online place, and if you're only going to do these conferences once a year, I would suggest that an online place is good. Some sort of forum discussion chat thing. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it exists and everyone uses it and everyone knows how to find it. It's no good having an IRC channel if nobody knows what the IRC channel is. 
You need to have discussions and you need to meet up periodically, physically, to... Well, actually, maybe we don't. We'll just do it online. This is a geek community. <laughs> the other thing you need to have, apart from the meetings, is you need to be consistent. Once a year is fine. It's not very frequent, but it's consistent. That's, enough, that's a very important thing with community. The community can understand when they should be coming together. Is it once a month, once a year, once every two years? Are we all going to come together in Turku? Are we all going to have to go and get the Turku 10 application? You know, this little GPS app that goes beep, 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 beep. You're now allowed to do a U-turn on the highway. Because you're 10 times between Turku. <coughs> we need to think who do we want in our community are we going to be all inclusive so I read a blog post over the weekend somebody was moaning about the new Tizan, Tizan the Migo successor community that in, uh, Intel, Linux Foundation and Samsung are going to form which apparently is going to be everything to everyone <laughs> um, I would propose that's not a good thing to aim for any young community. So do we want to exclude certain people or discourage them or give them a, a different place to live? So for instance, the noobs. Do we want whole, you know, the whole thing flooding? Is, is the community going to be all about people who are new to Python or people who are really experienced? Or both? That's kind of hard to do because the discussions are different. How are you going to cope with that separation if you want to do the separation? These are all things to think about and then make a rule. And then if it, the rule isn't working, change it. But the important thing is you make a rule. Then everyone knows what is the expected behavior. That makes community much, much easier. Because everyone knows what's expected of them. To come to Dirk for once a year and sit in an incredibly hot room. Um, and, and watch actually pretty good slide sets, apart from this one. Um, are we going to allow commercial interests in the community? Pretty obviously, yes, just by judging by the stream. Hands up anyone who isn't here looking for somebody to join their company who knows Python. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> the guys who are recruiting, that's what your recruitment pool is. It's about a third of the audience. <laughs> fight, 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 fight. Um, how are we going to cope with sort of the personality disorders. You know, the loud, noisy guy who always wants to be at the front of the room showing his slides. Won't ever get off the stage. Talks for hours on end about boring stuff. These are all things that should be thought about. Write it down, then everyone knows what it is, but you can always change it. If you don't have it written down, nobody knows what it is. Don't feed the... Troll. Wow. <laughs> Three people at the front are awake. <laughs> I spent hours searching for troll pictures. <laughs> There's lots and lots of pictures of that big thing underneath the bridge. It's somewhere in America, but multiple trolls, you'd be surprised. Very few. The nice thing with trolls nowadays is that there are no good ones left. Right? There's, there's just script kiddies and, and you know pretty spammers. People who are pretty easy to get rid of. Stallman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, just, just make sure he doesn't, it's pretty easy to get rid of Stallman in this community. We'll just, we'll write in Finnish. <laughs> um, and not talk about guns. Then, then he'll just not be interested. So, just don't react to them, make them go in a corner. Figure it out, there's plenty of stuff in there. Um, how are we going to deal with those big religious debates? The I or Emacs? The no. I Emacs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> already, already, schism. Um, <laughs> how, how are we going to cope with things like the, the Ruby guys? Well, that's pretty easy, actually. Um, just change their bicycles so they've got multiple gears and they, they'll be completely confused and not be able to get anywhere. Um, So, 
How many people know the pig or chicken idea? A few of you, yay. Hey, we're learning. Um, pig or chicken, when you've got a project, let's open a restaurant. Let's call it English Breakfasts R Us. The chicken is involved, but the pig is committed. <laughs> so which are you? Are you a chicken or a pig? Okay. And it's fine to be one or the other, but make a decision and let other people know what your commitment is. Most of the community will be chickens. They'll be kind of involved, but, you know, they'll be here another day. Only a few of us are stupid enough, sorry, brave and clever enough and beautiful enough to come and organize things like this. Seagull managers, anyone know that phrase? Seagull managers, they're, they're marvelous. Let me just squeeze in here. Ken Blanchard's 1985 book, Leadership and the One Minute Manager. Seagull managers fly in, make a lot of noise, dump on everyone and fly out. <laughs> um, I think that's the British English term, dump, which means shit. <laughs> okay. So, you know, seagulls, they fly in, they make a lot of noise, there's a lot of cack on the floor, and then they, they, they leave. So, don't be a seagull. Right? Be a chicken. <laughs> then the other thing is we have some people who have self-elected themselves because they actually do the work as the leaders. Or the shepherds. Now, the thing about shepherds is you have to decide whether you want your flock to be sheep or goats. This is a line from a Terry Pratchett book called Small Gods. Okay? Sheep need to be driven, goats need to be led. Most open source communities are filled with goats and quite a lot of cats, dogs, and other things that make it interesting and really, really hard to get everything moving in the same direction. And that's part of the appeal. Sheep, not so much. Now, as we start our community, we need to think, what's the growth pattern? Are we attempting to attract every single person, programmer in Finland and convert them to the one true religion? <laughs> And Guido is our God. Which means we start with this nice fast growth here. The problem with very fast growth is you have very fast fail off. This is a fairly common fa pattern. Fast growth, lack, loss, lack of interest, loss of interest, because you can't sustain that sort of growth and then tailing off to something nice and steady state. That is great if you're trying to form a company. It sucks if you're trying to form a community. Because that sudden influx of people, eternal September. Anyone not know the phrase eternal September? It's an American phrase from history. <clears throat> Every September, a whole class of college freshmen would come in, discover the internet, and start posting, oh man, this is cool! <laughs> yeah, so, and it always happened in September. A bunch of clueless noobs were posting stuff like, uh, did you know? Uh, oh. <laughs> Eternal September. That's what happens when you, your community can hockey stick. Um, do we want to wait for that? Do we want to be the largest something or other? A hockey stick. And then be comfortable with change. You know, next year are we going to have to take the biggest auditorium in this building or are we going to have to go to another building? Now, once we have this community and it's growing, what we need to do is think about what activities are we going to give to this community because it's young. It needs help, it needs nurturing, it needs teaching. But are we going to surround it with lots and lots of things so that it's, 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 the community spends its whole time spinning round and not actually achieving anything? Or are we going to focus on one or two small things? Or are we going to like divide up and 
run off into lots of little corners and then come together once a year and show each other what we've done. These are all valid. What do we want to do? One word of caution, having run lots and lots of bar camps and other high energy things where lots of people learn lots of stuff and get very excited. Wait till next week. Don't do anything tonight or tomorrow. Well, tonight, drink beer. Um, as Conan says, you want to, what's it, the lamentation of the women and something anyway. Um, so, drink beer, or soda, or wine, or whatever you want. Um, tomorrow, go hard! But, once you've done those things, don't come away from here thinking, oh no, fire up! Um, because that energy will die down by Wednesday morning. And that you'll just have lots and lots of shit on your to-do list that you're not ever going to get to. Believe me, I've done this way too many times. Wait till next week, Monday. Look back. By then, hopefully, all the presenters will have got their presentations up on the interweb somewhere, with links, possibly, that people can find. You can look back over the presentations and think, yeah, I'm going to do something with that. I'm actually going to write some code or tutorial, whatever it is. Do it then. The important thing to remember is that at events like this, we are the important people, along with our streaming fans, okay, who couldn't make it here today. Um, do the hack days, uh, have just casual beer meetups, and just remember, we're all important. What was it, eight years ago, Zuckerberg was a lonely undergraduate creating a website so that he could cyber-stalk attractive girls in college. Right? Now he's one of the richest people in the world. So now everyone wants to talk to him. Eight years ago, not so much. <laughs> and we've got to have the hidden pictures. Um, so anybody know the reference for kitten pictures? Other than that, they're incredibly cute. Uh, There's a guy called Steve Yege who works at Google, <coughs> gave a talk on something or other. And he very famously said, Oh, by the way, my boss doesn't know this, but I'm quitting work on his project because I can't face working on any more cat picture applications, <laughs> which is effectively what most internet things are. They're just ways for people to get pictures of their cats on the internet. <laughs> that problem is solved. We don't need any more apps for that. And, and remember, if anyone asks questions, you're slowing down the amount of time between us and beer. <laughs> <laughs> and those guys in the back are very, very thirsty and not very light, so they may come through you. Mike, I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> if you forget that this is Finnish audience. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what's your take on arranging uh, like smaller stuff like bar camps or hacks, hack days or whatever? So what would it be a good, good thing to start from those? Uh, Any ideas? Find a venue, pick a date, done. <laughs> Right, uh, literally, th that's th events like this. If, if if you are the organizing team, or you look at what the organizing team have done here for this event, you think, oh god, that's so much work, and it is for a once a year large conference. For a hackathon type thing or a, just a meetup, you need to pick a place, set a time, and then tell everyone about it. And as long as more than, more than the organizers turn up, win! <laughs> right? Set the barrier for winning really low. Right? <laughs> so there's no need to sort of say, okay, there are 30 Python developers in Durpool, we know this, so we're going to aim for, there's two organizers, so we need an attendance of 28 other people. No. <laughs> <laughs> there's two organizers, we need an attendance of three, including the organizers. Because that makes it worthwhile. Set the bar low. Um, 
if anybody wants to chat about how to organize stuff, I'm more than happy to talk about it. But that's pretty much how I do stuff. You know, find a place, pick a time that suits me, and then announce it. <laughs> and now you have a big mailing list to announce it to. And, and we've discovered that Turtle is actually not that hard to get to. You know, that, that uphill <laughs> certainly sucks the fuel, but... Uh, <laughs> And, and, and the, the Border Patrol, I think we've been taking training from TSA or something. It wasn't pleasant coming through the, 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 the border, but we managed. We managed. Sorry, I'm cutting up the beers off. Do you have an opinion on how actually companies as a, can, can feed the community and can community companies? So now we're talking more about individual relations with the community. So, I mean, obviously, there's lots of companies here. Well, I mean, what can be the, the, the best way to optimal to have an optimal <coughs> relationship? Um, okay, the, the, the best thing for the community is that the company just gives it money. Okay, just sponsors beer and food. That's pretty good. Um, if the company would like to get a bit more out of it, um, that starts to come down to somebody getting a bit more organized and doing something a bit more like monthly type meetups. Uh, how many people here from Helsinki? Okay. How many people here from Helsinki know about the Proactum open source meetup? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one at the back! Yes! <laughs> okay, so this, that's actually a really nice model. It's a company. I have no real clue what they do. Something to do with open source and developers. Their website's all in Finnish and pretty sucky. So I don't think they're doing uh, Ruby-type web development. Because <laughs> um, the website sucks. Uh, but they sponsor this monthly meetup. And their sponsorship is uh, about once a year they pay for beer. Because um, they hold it in one of the beer pubs in Helsinki. And the other months, other companies sponsor it. And if you're sponsoring, you get to stand, you get to put a a monkey in a suit at the front of the room, uh, usually without slides, talk about something that's interesting to the community. So that's the deal. So everyone has to sort of sit with beer and pretend to listen to the monkey in a suit at the front. Um, but that requires a bit more organization. That requires somebody to step up from the community and organize it. Either a company or a person, it doesn't matter. But yeah, that's that's the way I see that you know companies help is, is that sort of uh, subtle sponsorship. It's it's a long term payoff. It's not a, it's not a quick win. Actually, in Helsinki, the GitHub meetings are quite interesting because I've been starting to hear a rumor that they don't e even need a feature backlog because they can just go up with all the developers using GitHub for a beer and they will hear everything which sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like that's actually cheaper than trying to find out the bugs yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, you, well, in Finland, you'd have, it gets a bit more expensive because you you have to play this sort of very careful balancing act. Just enough beer to talk, but not so much beer that they speak Norwegian. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a hard one. But yeah, that's that's a, that's a, for a company. That's that's a good thing if they've got a specific product <laughs> that like GitHub that, that's very developed. <laughs> um, but if, if it's a generic, like most of the companies are sort of developer houses, they're looking to recruit developers. So, you know, sponsoring a, a couple of beers an evening, and it's remarkably cheap actually um, to sponsor a few beers. You know, and because you print the, uh, the little coupons for, the, for how many beers and you decide how much you want to spend. So it's a, it's a relatively cheap activity, especially if you spread it across multiple companies. And once that thing starts to run, it, it's pretty easy to find the companies to sponsor it. Can you repeat your like, uh, three opinions about how to build sustainable organizations? Or oh. <laughs> Three things I wombled about earlier. 
Uh, no, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> off the top of my head, uh, you need to have something that's regular. Okay, so Python Suomi RU has something that's regular. It's once a year. That's that's enough to slowly grow the community. Um, at this point, which is what the questions are starting to sound like, we need you need something more frequent. Where's the, the, the <laughs> um, yeah, so regular. Um, the other thing is uh, don't do the the mountain. So in other words, you have like the first one's okay, the second one's really good, the third one's brilliant, and then there's nobody at the fourth one. So you you know you only have four sponsors, and then the fifth month there's nobody sponsoring the beer. So it's, you know one person is dog. It turns up. Um, that's the prime thing that will tend to kill communities is lack of consistency. So it's better to have. Um, 12 small monthly events rather than you know six every two months that are way <laughs> bigger and require more organizing. Um, <coughs> what were the other things I said I would mention? Yeah, uh, have somewhere common that is uh, that you can talk. So that the discussion can be started or concluded online. Um, my experience with Finnish audiences uh, is that, unlike this audience, they don't ask questions during the event. But about two days later, some throwaway comment you made on slide 54 of 2073 will come up and be asked in excruciatingly painful detail. <laughs> That's when you know that although they you know they weren't looking at you, they were they were they were paying attention. They were just paying attention. Um, yeah. yeah. Discussion in the same place. Um, <clears throat> draft some set of rules. Whatever they are. Um, the, the what they are is not so important as actually having something. Um, and, and I don't mean Finnish rules, as in the Finnish great thick binders of crap that people build for these RUs. Um, <laughs> I mean something that exists on the website and isn't referenced by the official rules. Code of conduct, call it something, whatever you will. What's the expected behavior? Um, does, does this conference have the code of conduct. No, drink as many beer as yeah. No, that wasn't even on that. The, <laughs> that's the evening's code of conduct. Um, a lot of conferences now are actually publishing official codes of conduct at the event that say we will not tolerate isms. So, you know, no homophobia, no sexism, no uh, one-leggedisms. Um, at a Python conference, Rubyism is allowed, so you know, because obviously they haven't seen the light. <laughs> They've obviously seen the vertical bar characters because that plays a lot in the code. Um, but yeah, so um, did that answer the question, or did I just start pontificating and rambling? Yeah, but code, code of conduct for events, if you go and look at code of conduct at events, it's one of those things where you just throw it up on the website, and that, that, what that means is that everyone understands that they're supposed to behave like a responsible, mature adult, and, and not like a, you know, a 13-year-old boy. Um, and if they do behave inappropriately, they will be asked to leave politely, and then they will be asked to leave impolitely. And then they'll be thrown downstairs. Um, but it's that thing of if you say it beforehand, it's much, much easier to um, enforce it rather than somebody come up. You have to have that difficult conversation. I think we've all questioned out. Everyone's had enough of my pontificating. Nobody wants to look at the cutie kittens. Everyone wants to look at that cold glass of beer. Actually, that's a glass of English beer, so 
There isn't condensation dripping down it. That's everything. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.